Welcome to the Punters Guide, another brilliant weekend of racing. Group 1 action, of course. We've got the Eclipse to look forward to at Sandown. A good card at Haydock as well. Jason Weaver is alongside us. Uh, Jason, before we get stuck into the action, looking forward to seeing City of Troy again. More on him shortly, but, you know, he's a brilliant winner of the Betfred Derby. And this is his next assignment. And, uh, well, hopefully he can be the world beater we all hoped. Yeah, that's the, the thing. We're sort of wanting him to march on to greatness, aren't we? You know, of course, it's in the back of your mind, only because it's fresh from last year with August Rodan being a in and out performer, if you like. Look, he's had one bad run. It was in the guineas. Aiden has said that, um, you know, it, it was down to him um, and he placed all his faith in him for the big one, the Betfred Derby at Epsom. And um, he, he managed to come up with the goods. He was babyish. Uh, he still was green. It was the first time he's been dropped in. Will we get to see an improved model again today? That's the key, isn't it? Well, we'll talk about more about that race shortly. Before we get there, though, there's three brilliant races in front of the ITV cameras at Sandown, starting with the charge over five furlongs. And we see the non thought winner living the dream, who's probably got a little bit to prove after his uh, Bed Temple stake disappointment. He's got Royal Ascot contenders taking him on, likes of Twilight Calls as well. The hat trick seeking desperate hero. We've got group horses. And progressive handicappers all clashing in the sprint. Yeah, you mentioned him, desperate hero. He's been sort of chalked up £13 for an absolute romper for Hamilton. Um, Apollo 1 has been running really well. He's been placed in a, a Wokingham and a Stewards Cup last season. Um, and, and when you go down through them, it was disappointing, wasn't it? From living the dream, he ran well under soft conditions. He then bombed a little bit when he was a red-hot favourite. So he's on the recovery mission um, and we will... Uh, wait and see which one turns up. For me, um, I don't think we've got a, a Brando or a Batash in here at the moment, have we? You know, that's that's uh, the level of horses that have won this in the past. Twilight Calls, I think he fits the bill with the cheap pieces on for the first time. I'm taking a bit of a leap because it's not since April 2022 that he graced the winner's enclosure. He's a tough one, isn't he, to catch right? But for all the world, this looks like it sets up for him to close it out. Yeah, fancy about Ascot to run well. He ran OK, of course, in the King stand. Uh, Twilight calls. Big chance, Ryan Moore, back on board again. Let's look at the challenge then at 2.25. Again, 10 take their uh, place here over a mile. A decent handicap. Loads of good handicappers in a Holloway boy. Did you a favour getting some place money, of course, in the Royal Hunt Cup. We've got Point Linus in here, a good York winner. Well, there's one at the top, which could be a group horse and handicap, Cicero's gift. Not seen since being the St. James's Palace Stakes at Royal Ascot last year. He's a, an intriguing contender in this handicap. Yeah, he's returning off the, the long break. He looked really good, didn't he, when he sort of smashed his hat trick um, into the back of the net. And then he didn't get any luck behind Paddington. Um, whether he would have finished, you know, right up his tail or not, I don't know. But we could chalk him up as being a, a little bit closer. He is a fascinating contender with Billy Lochnane on board. You know, and you go down the bottom, all of these ran together, didn't they? Um, dual identity, too, too tempting. Classic was a little bit unlucky. Flew home through the, the pack to get there late in the day. Um, and Magic Memories, absolutely no weight on its back. One with any amount in hand at Yarmouth when last seen with Tom Queeley on board. And I suppose, there you go. Perotto, last year's winner off 94. He reappears here off 102. But... um. Point Linus is going to go lickety-split on the front end. He got away with that at York, didn't he? Um, and I think that I've got to stick with Holloway Boy. Bit of match fitness on his side. That could be the thing that catches Cicero's gift out. Um, and he won't be as far back as he was at the Royal Meeting. Um, we know he's going to be held up and he'll be working his way through late in the day. So I think I'll stick with the old Holloway Boy. Yeah, keeping the faith then uh, with Holloway a boy. Right, the day staff is a listed contest at three o'clock for uh, the Phillies, of course, the three year olds. So not a lot to choose between these on ratings at the top. Soprano rocketed uh, up the handicap though for a win at Royal Ascot, and she's the likely market leader. Yeah, went into the, the Sandringham, um, got the better of Indelible on that occasion. Um, you know, you, you look at ratings, she got raised to a mark of 107 after that victory last time. So she just about sits at the top of where the rating band is. Could William Haggis pull another? It'd be huge. It'd be like pulling a giraffe out of a hat, wouldn't it? He won this last year with Mystic Pearl, who was rated 78. He tries again with a Philly rated 77. I can't see that 
at all. Again, strong pace, clove pitch, Volsena like to go forward. Is there a possibility that spiritual hasn't been running that bad when the Gosden team weren't in form? Richard King's go on board, out there at double digits, got the nine runners at the moment, going to get the first three placings. I think that she's a little bit underestimated in here. And if they go quick, they'll be able to drop her in. So she was their guineas filly early on. They ran her in the Nell Gwyn. I think she's a contender at an each way price. Yeah, spiritual then in the George Strawbridge colours. Then the big one, the Eclipse 335, the group one. We mentioned him at the top of the show, of course, City of Troy. Looking to follow up his Betfred Derby success. The dead eight do go, though. So there'll be each way thieves hunting around for something at a price. I think that's the, 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 the way to play. Look, we, we'll be watching, won't we? And we want to see a super performance from him. And where is he going to end up? as the season progresses. Um, certainly got a, uh, you know, a, a, he's well clear, 124 official rating. Ghost Rider is on the recovery. Dancing Gemini is back at a trip that may well suit. Could he be the group one winner that Kieran Schumach is, is hoping for? But I have to say, if there was an each way runner in here, probably be Al Riffer at the top. He's got some very, very good form. He was only a shell of a three-year-old. Likely to make up into a stronger four-year-old. He could be the one to, to run really well at a bit of a price. But we think City of Troy is home. Yeah, and dropped out to 10 furlongs as well. I mean, is that going to be his trip? I was watching the Derby, the Bedford Derby again the other day, and I couldn't believe how long it took Ryan Moore to pull him up. He was still pulling for his head after the line. He won with any amount in hand. It's a really strange one, isn't it? That um, they've always said to us, you know, he just doesn't get tired. Well, you know, we, we saw that he he did get tired in the 2000 guineas. Um, and so we've got that question mark. But the the Ballydor team, or Aiden at least anyway, has super, super faith in him. Um, and I, I just think we're going to see an improved model again. Um, you know, I think there'll be a strongish gallop on. It'll be fair for all. And we'll see him power up the hill. Yeah, can't wait to see him in action once again. Let's uh, move up to the northwest then and the action at Haydock. We've got a staying handicap at 205 to try and sift through. Interesting that most of the market leaders are towards the top of the handicap. Do you expect class will out in this one? Probably. Um, Wild Waves has been super impressive since the hood has got on the last two starts. Um, Align the Stars had a few of these in behind when he managed to break his duck at Thirsk last time. But if you get an opportunity, look back at the Royal Ascot race that 4-1-0 fever ran in. Down the back, he was reefing and pulling for his head. Billy Lockname did really well to get him back into a rhythm. We've got Callum Shepherd on board, who's in tip-top form at the moment. And he hit a bit of a flat spot as they came into the straight. And then he really ran through the line. So I think the extra quarter mile is going to suit him. And the fact that George Bowie backs him up off such a huge effort at the Royal Meeting 16 days ago, suggests that he's, he's bounced out of it no problem. Good evening there, 4 one fever then. Uh, winning run did come to an end, but it was a tough uh, assignment at Royal Ascot. Can he get back to winning ways? Then we've got the Lancashire Oaks uh, for the uh, Phillies and Mares over a mile and a half. And I'm really interested here in seeing Queen of the Pride. We were lucky enough to be there a month ago when she won over track and trip. This looks like a logical step and... She'll mean a lot to Connections, won't she? Well-bred, out of Roaring Lion, well-named Queen of the Pride. I think Connections think a lot of her. I'm just her fifth start. I'm really looking forward to seeing her in action tomorrow. Yeah, she she settled much better last time under Oshin. Um, Look, uh, Rossa stays loyal with Lady Bova. I think she was possibly the unlucky one in the run last time and absolutely sort of flashed home. He'll be thinking he can turn that form around. And just a bit further back, that was in the Leicester Piggott, wasn't it? Um, you know, the Haggis team would want to have tried to, to win that again. C theme was the real closer up towards the line, back in fourth on that occasion. How much are they going to take a significant step forward from one run to the other is open to a little bit of debate. But she really caught my eye. And if we go down the bottom, Forest Fairy, when she won um, the, the, at Chester, the second has come out and won the Ribblesdale just the other day. So if we forgive her, her Betfred Oaks run, she's got to be a contender. However, the three that ran against each other, I'm going to go the other way to you. And I think that uh, C theme could take that significant step forward with the Haggis team in rip-roaring form. 
See thing then for William Haggis to turn that form around from the Leicester Pickett Stakes. And then the big betting race of the day is the Old Newton Cup. But a mile and a half is the just some real old favourites in here. A big field as well. As, as you'd expect, it's wide open. Yeah, it is. Uh, a lot of people have latched on to Epic Poet. Um, he ran really well at the Royal Meeting. That was only his second try for the team. Astro King would be a contender if he was to settle over this sort of trip, but he can get himself a little bit revved up and be handy. I know he's only reserved at the moment, so keep a close eye. Knightswood down the bottom ran really well behind Iron Line. If there's any non-runners, he could slot in there and he'll be a huge price. But I think the fact that Rossa is up at Haydock for the, the day when Beckett's got loads of runners up and down the country, if not now, ran at Lingfield, ran at Epsom on both occasions, didn't seem to handle the undulations. Actually got sort of caught on heels coming down the hill at Lingfield. Much more galloping nature of the track. He's been gelded prior to his assignment last year. He was, uh, he had a group one entry. Um, you know, things have gone awry. He's now rated 99. He could be well in front of the handicapper where he sits at the moment. And um, the fact Rosser is up at Haydock, expect that combo to have a pretty decent day. No conventional track there may be key to if not now at a decent price in the old Newton Cup. Right, seven races on the ITV cameras, seven brilliant races as well. Really looking forward uh, to Saturday's action. What would be your strongest bet on the card? Um, I think that the fact that um, George Bowie's team are in such good form at the moment, um, 4-1-0 fever, the more I look back at that Royal Ascot run, he was a, he was a bit of an eye-catcher. The extra quarter mile, he will need to settle. And I think there was only that there was the bunching down the back that set him alight and he proved to be a little bit too keen. So uh, 4 one fever. Callum Shepherd having a bit of a run at the moment after the famous jocking off in the Betfred derby. Yeah, and a Royal Ascot success as well. There is confidence the world have got well uh, deserved. Right, brilliant day's action. Join Jason in for the ITV cameras on Saturday. And of course, join us both next week for the New Market July meeting as well to look forward to. Plus, of course, that super Saturday with a fantastic action at York, Ascot and Chester as well. A brilliant week ahead. Fingers crossed can find a few winners uh, to build your pockets out of a brilliant week of racing.